How does a cop have sex with a speed measurement device? He laser. Hey guys, what's going on? I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far. So yesterday I went to a LiDAR class. And for those of you that are not familiar, LiDAR is a speed measurement device uh, that we use to clock people's speeds and it uses laser. So I figured what better time to do a video than on LiDAR. So what exactly is LiDAR? LiDAR is actually an acronym that stands for light detection and ranging. And it's one of the best tools that law enforcement has at their disposal for enforcing speed traffic laws. Now there's a few things that officers and departments have to kind of take into account uh, before they start using LiDAR in a particular area. It's no really no different than radar. The first concern, is there a demonstrated need? Has there been a bunch of complaints in a residential area? Are there a bunch of complaints in a school zone area? Number two, does state law even allow the officer to run radar in that particular area or any type of speed detection? I don't know about every other state, but at least in Georgia, not every road is qualified for using radar and LIDAR. And lastly, and of course the most important, is the officer even certified to use that particular device? Most people don't realize this, but not all cops can run radar or LIDAR. Some officers have radar, some officers have LIDAR, some officers have both, and some officers they don't have either one of them. In Georgia, most cops have an average of about two years before they go into any specialized training that has to do with speed detection. Now, me personally, I have been radar certified since about 2009. I can't remember the exact date. Since around 2009, so for nine years now, I've been using radar. I understand the fundamentals of how it works. But what about LiDAR? What do they teach in LiDAR class? Part of the reason I wanted to make this video today instead of tomorrow or down the road is while it's still fresh in my mind, I wanted to go over some of the things that they talk about in the class that I'm sure you guys would probably be interested in knowing about. I actually, I learned a bunch in this class. I really did. Um, a lot of the fundamentals are the same as radar, so a lot of the principles that apply to LiDAR are also applied in radar. For instance, uh, the speed of light. The speed of light is 186,000 miles per second, both for a radar signal and LIDAR. So in the beginning of the LIDAR class, pretty much the first half of the day was a radar refresher. Now there were some people in the class, um, I was actually there with other guys from my department, and out of five of us, only two of us have actually been to radar. So the other guys that were in the class were a little bit lost because there's a lot of math, there's a lot of uh, technical aspects that involve the LIDAR and the radar. So they were kind of under the assumption that they were kind of in over their heads. But as long as you break it down, all the fundamentals are very basic. You just have to understand the concept and uh, you can run with it from there. So like I said, the whole first part of the class is basically going over radar and the fundamentals of how it works. Then they start getting into the history of the laser and the guy that invented it in 1960. Then after the history lesson, they start to go into the scientific part of it. They start going into light wavelengths, measuring in nanometers. The next thing that they teach in this class, and this is one that they really try to drill into your head is called the cosine effect. The cosine effect means the angle that you are shooting your device can have a direct impact on the displayed speed of the violator. The good news for drivers is that's always in the driver's favor. The further from the roadside the cop is, the greater the cosine and the lower the speed will actually show on their uh, speed detection device. So obviously laser's been out for a long time now and it's pretty much common knowledge that a laser is much more accurate than radar. And I'll tell you why. Laser is vehicle specific and it requires an officer to specifically pinpoint one vehicle at a time. The newest technology for speed enforcement is the laser called LIDAR. For light detecting and ranging, it transmits a narrow beam of infrared light. This pinpoint beam lets the laser target a vehicle even if it's mixed in with other traffic. This makes it an ideal tool for use on urban freeways where radar gets confused by multiple targets. Now when you're shooting radar, it's important to understand the science behind it. It's important to understand that as you shoot that signal out, it's in a cone. So the further out your signal goes, the wider of an area that you are covering. Now once that frequency is out, it then hits the object that's traveling toward the officer and the signal is sent back in a condensed wavelength. And basically the machine measures the difference between those and does the math for you and figures out your speed. And this is what's called the target speed. The only bad part about radar is whenever you shoot out that signal, remember it goes out in a cone. The further out that cone goes, the bigger it gets. So if you are shooting targets that are far away, chances are you're picking up everybody else around them, possibly even on the other side of the highway. And this is kind of where 
uh, experience and training come in because you have to be able to visually see somebody speeding. That's how you establish what's called tracking history. And the more and more you run radar, eventually it'll get to the point where you can just look at a vehicle and you know pretty much within a mile or an hour or two how fast they're going. Again, the problem with radar is that it can be challenged in court because of several circumstances. These circumstances can be anything from the officer's certification to tracking history, to the last time the machine was calibrated, to accuracy checks. There's so much that you have to keep in mind. It's not just going out there, pulling a trigger, and then you write the ticket and you're done. You never have to do anything again. There's a lot that leads up to running radar, and there's a lot that proceeds after that, uh, along with, with LIDAR too. Now, case law has actually established that officers do not have to know the science behind it, nor do they need to understand the technical workings of the device itself. Now, obviously that's part of this class, but it's not something you have to remember when you go to court. So without giving you guys an hour long lesson on boring case law, let me go over a couple of the important ones that pertain to speed detection. Honeycutt versus Commonwealth establishes that officers only need to know how to set up test and properly operate their device. State versus D'Antonio basically gives what's called judicial notice of the Doppler principle. This means that the officer does not have to explain the Doppler shift and how it works in court. Thomas versus City of Norfolk basically establishes that officers have to perform an accuracy check at the beginning and end of every one of their shifts where they're using these devices. Now these case laws, and there's a ton others, but especially pertaining to speed, these are important to know before you go out there and you start enforcing speed traffic because you have to understand what you can and can't do, what your limitations are. And it also helps when you go to court. The most important thing to remember is that you are not out there to check every single car to see if they are speeding or not. You are supposed to be able to visually see that somebody is speeding and you are using your equipment to verify that. That is it. And there's a huge difference in that. Don't be that guy that's on your phone texting and you hear the high tone and, oh, you got one now. You need to pay attention to what you're doing because that kind of stuff can be challenged in court. Now, radar and LIDAR both technically send out a cone. But like I said, there's a huge difference in radar and LIDAR as far as the cone goes. So at a thousand feet out, most uh, newer radars will have about a hundred foot spread. So again, that's, that might be covering the entire highway. Whereas with LIDAR at a thousand feet, you only have about a three foot spread. Perfect for the front side of a car. Now because of this accuracy, LIDAR tickets in court are very hard to challenge, especially because they are vehicle specific. And another thing some of these devices have incorporated is actually taking a picture of your car. It's kind of hard to deny that you are speeding when there's a visual graph with your car, the speed, the distance from the device. Another good thing about laser is you can actually be a lot farther away than you can with radar. So I could be almost a mile down the road and clock you. Now I wouldn't do that because again, I want to establish that tracking history. I want to be able to see that you're speeding and I personally unless you have Hawkeyes I don't think you can see somebody speeding at a mile away so I like to wait until somebody's about a quarter mile away and then I'll clock them but some LiDAR units can successfully measure your speed from 4,000 feet away that's almost a mile long before you ever even see the cop on the side of the road now a huge question I'm sure I'm going to get is uh, questions on radar jammers and laser jammers first of all don't even think about buying a radar jammer. Radar jammers are actually banned under federal law. So if you get caught with that, you're doing federal time. Laser jammers vary from state to state. I know in Georgia they're actually legal, uh, but a lot of the new LIDAR units that are coming out for departments um, actually have ways of circumventing those jammers. Not to mention a well-trained officer kind of knows how to get around them. Anyway, guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below and I'll try to address them accordingly. Hopefully this is a pretty educational video. Maybe I answered some questions that you guys have been wondering for a long time. Anyway, guys, thank you so much and I will see you guys very, very soon.